This chapter contains several concepts that you're probably already somewhat familiar with. Be warned, however, that without a true understanding of what these concepts mean, a person can be misled as to what the true health of an economy is. We're going to split this chapter into three distinct parts. Part one is the business cycle. Part two is unemployment, and part three is inflation. It is an important chapter as it sets the stage for the analytical presentation in later chapters. Business cycles are alternating increases and decreases in economic activity over time. Each business cycle consists of four phases. A peak is when business activity reaches a temporary maximum with full employment and near capacity output. A recession is a decline in total output, income, employment, and trade lasting six months or more. This is sometimes referred to as an economic contraction. The trough is the bottom of the recession period, and the expansion is when output and employment are recovering and expanding toward the full employment level. This figure shows the business cycle. Economists distinguish four phases of the business cycle. The duration and strength of each phase may vary. Additionally, individual cycles vary in duration and intensity. However, notice you can see that over the long run, the trend is always economic growth. The United States' long-run economic growth has been interrupted by periods of instability. Uneven growth has been the pattern, with inflation often accompanying rapid growth and declines in employment and output during periods of recession and depression. This uneven growth is a result of economic shocks. Economic shocks are unexpected events that individuals and firms may have trouble adjusting to. Inflexible prices are thought to be a major factor in preventing the economy from quickly adjusting to economic shocks. Prices can be inflexible downwards, which means that if total spending unexpectedly decreases, firms cannot lower their prices, so the firms will end up selling fewer units of output. These sticky prices result in slower sales, which will cause firms to cut back on production. This causes GDP to fall. Then employment will fall because of the reduced demand for output and an economic contraction will occur. The following are economic shocks that contribute to business cycles. The first one, major innovations, may trigger new investment and or consumption spending. But these occur irregularly and unexpectedly and may contribute to the variability of economic activity. Recent examples are the rapid economic expansion resulting from the availability of computers and the internet. Changes in productivity may also be a related cause. Unexpected changes in resource availability or unexpected changes in the rate of technological advances can affect productivity resulting in expansion when new resources and technology are discovered or a slowdown when there is a shortage or innovation stalls. Monetary factors are a result of actions taken by monetary authorities. In the U.S., this responsibility falls primarily to the Federal Reserve. As the monetary authorities print more money, an inflationary boom can occur. Printing less money than what people are expecting can trigger an output decline. Another example is often referred to as an external shock, since it can be caused by forces outside of the country. As the economy adjusts to political events like peace treaties or war, economic strains can occur. The last shock, financial instability, was the most recent cause of a contraction. Rapid asset price increases or decreases can spill over to the general economy and cause booms and busts. The recession of 2007 was led by excessive money, overvalued real estate, and unsustainable mortgage debt. So what do these cycles affect? Most agree that the level of aggregate spending is important, especially the changes in spending on capital goods and consumer durables. Recall that the definition of durable goods is a good with an expected life of three or more years, like cars or home appliances. Spending on durable goods output is more volatile than non-durables and services. This is because spending on non-durables or services often cannot be postponed regardless of the economy's impact on citizens. Also, durable good items, such as new automobiles or a new washer and dryer, are generally more expensive for households to purchase, making durable goods more vulnerable in times of declining income and uncertainty for households.